The day before D-Day, something big was in the air. It was all kept very hush-hush, but one just knew that something was going to happen fairly soon. We were intensely excited, full of anticipation. The waiting was over, all the training we were going to at last, put it into practice. It was history. We didn't realize that we were living history. The whole area became so congested with service people of all kinds and vehicles and boats and so on, it was quite beyond belief. We had reached the point where it was impossible to squeeze in another tank or another man anywhere. Middle of the night, there was the sound of voices, engines, and then, of course, the next morning, the road was empty. We got back aboard. Last post was announced. It's the last time the mail would be taken ashore. We all guessed something was on. So everyone had to write their last letters. I had three pounds at the time. That's what I was worth. So I put it in an envelope and addressed it to my mother. I can remember this day writing to my mother and, and I had said in the letter that if anything happened to me, I hope she would go on in life the way she always done, with a nice good smile on her face and remember that I was only one of thousands and just be proud that her son had died for his country.
the enemy coast now and the running is starting and the word is passed from man to man the machine starts to rock and jump one minute 30 seconds red light green light and out out get on get out get out out fast into the full night out out into the air over france i look back at these fellows they're very young face is just uh, discernible in this very soft yellow light that was allowed back in the fuse light. And uh, I, I felt really this was a, a moment of history when these fellows in particular were being tested to their very utmost of human capability. When we got onto the landing ground, um, the atmosphere was one of nervousness and uh, apprehension. I've never seen it in my life before. Hundreds and hundreds of ships laden with men and soldiers, all coming in from the very course of England. You couldn't see the sea out here for miles with just packed with ships. It was dusk where we went. I can always remember because on the end of the quay was a lone piper playing the bagpipes, which uh, has always stuck in my memory as the landing craft were going out. And I thought to myself, well, we're going to bring the Isle of Wight. My home's just over there. Can I swim? <laughs> when we were passing the White Cliffs of Dover, the sergeant says we passed, he said, take a good look, boys. He said, many of you will never see that again. Oh, the sweet. 
thank you for joining us for this special 80th D-Day commemoration. We'll leave you with the simple sentiment engraved on one of the headstones here in Bayeux. In loving memory of our lad, we loved you too dearly to ever forget. Good night, son.